So you have decided to buy an e-bike. Now, how can you avoid some of the mistakes that we all, ourselves included, made as, with your first purchase? I'm gonna wait till the other bikes come by here, Michelle. But that's what we're gonna talk about today, so stick around. Two, I was gonna come by on your left. Well, hello again, Internet. Welcome back to the channel. We are out today on the American Tobacco Trail. We've got about a 30-some mile loop that we're going through Morrisville, North Carolina. I am here with the always lovely, always beautiful, wonderful love of my life, Mrs. Southern E-Biking. Say hello, darling. Hello, all, on this fine, lovely day. It is. It is a beautiful day out here today. Uh, yeah, mistakes buying e-bikes. You know, this is something we talked about on the on the way up here. And uh, Michelle, we're, let's just jump right into it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we're, we're gonna navigate, what, 30 some miles here through Morrisville, North Carolina. Uh, that might become a little bit relative, uh, rel relative a little bit later on in the video. But Michelle, what would be the number one mistake that people make? Looking at price more than the quality. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's gonna be about the biggest mistake a lot of folks make. Two of us going to come by on your left. Uh, two of us on your left. And, you know, an e-bike is, uh, is a pretty significant purchase. Even for, on the cheap side. For, yeah, even the cheap ones. And my dad used to say all the time, he had a saying, he says, I'm too broke to buy cheap. And what he meant by that is he can't afford to go back and buy again, you know. And so... I'm gonna to say to buy a, a budget type e-bike, I can think of one reason only, and that would be if somebody wanted to experiment and they was willing to lose the money that they were experimenting with. And even at that, you could, what, what would be a solution to where you don't have to experiment so much, Michelle? Well, the only one that I can think of is to go try and rent the bikes a yeah. couple of times. Uh, I mean, you can rent them from shops, a lot of shops. Yeah. But you can also, they have all those ones out like or locally here. You'll find a lot cities. of them over. Yeah, the cities, yeah. A, a lot of them, art museum, the greenways and stuff around here have them. Yeah, yeah. And that would be the best way. I mean, you're not going to get all, any kind of bells or whistles with them, but it'll give you a general idea if you hate it or love it. Exactly, exactly. So, so, yeah, try and get, basically you want to buy the best quality you can afford. But the, be, the, side, the side of it is also, d don't go spending more than you need to uh, either. Sure, sure. You know, because there's, there's some out there that are like five, six thousand dollars. Oh, there's the some, there some more than that. There's some more well, than no, that. Well, no, but I'm just talking about, so I know some folks that spend right. four or five grand on something that's com comparable to the e-bike I'm riding right now. Uh -huh. So. All right, what would be the next mistake well, that a lot of folks make? Believe in the marketing, the marketing hype. Yeah. This is the best yeah. bike out and there. You know, what are, what are some of the, the, the terms that you hear? Two of us gonna come by, young man, on your left. Good job teaching you the ropes. Uh, yeah, buying, buying into all the marketing hype. What are, what are some of the, the key terms that we hear that people should like oh, not believe or avoid? A, a beast of a, of a, a, a beast of a uh, budget bike and best thing for your buck and these things beast are in not. The beast in the woods. Yeah. Will conquer these any hill. These things are not. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, these, this is... I might get into a little bit of trouble with some of my friends out there when I say this, uh, but that's not a, a bike review. That's a bike sales pitch. And yeah, it's, it's marketing hype. Yeah, it's it's marketing hype. And you know, we we just put out a video about how we're not necessarily really going much on reviews. Uh, and I'm not interested in selling somebody an e-bike. I'm interested in selling everybody on the idea of getting an e-bike. And I'll help you decide what features, but I'm not gonna give you any brands to say, 
ooh, this is the best. This is the beast. So, you know, even when you're watching what's supposed to be independent, keep in mind there's incentive for independent there. And we're just not going to go any further than that with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, what would be what would be the next thing we come up with? Well, I mean, this one kind of goes along with that believing the mileage that the manufacturers yeah. tell you. Yeah. And you have to listen to the verbiage. It says up to, not it will. Yeah. So. So. I mean, you it, can take. It's usually take, about double what you're realistically yeah, if it, if going it to says, get. If it says it'll get up to 70 mile range, you might as well figure you're going to get about 35. And, and that's not running around on the throttle only or anything no. like that. That's two of us going to come by on your left. Uh, that's going to be riding like Michelle and I do. You know, we don't go flying around. We hardly ever go over 20 miles an hour. Uh, I, don't, I don't ever go well, over you 20 miles. Well, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Because my bike tops it off at 20 miles. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and we rarely use the throttle, if at all. Matter of fact, my one other bike, I even took the throttle off of it. So, you know, but you're still going to end up with about half the mileage the manufacturer states in there. And that is going to become more important because if this is your first purchase, you're probably thinking, oh, shoot, I'm only going to go 10 or 15 miles. 20 is going to be the most I ever go. And <laughs> what's going to happen with that, Michelle? That's going to, that's well, going yeah, to we, double uh, we, up when we When we had first had our boat, had our e-bikes, We'd go out for a 12 mile ride, man. We thought we were somebody. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, we have gone on a 12 mile bike ride. Everybody look at us as we wave our little hands. <laughs> I don't know that it was ever like that, but. <laughs> well, I mean, but we thought we were somebody. Right, right. You and know, now, I mean, we're, we're like, joining rides so that we can get over 30 miles on. Exactly. I mean, what's the point in hooking up that rack for a less than a 30 mile ride? There's exactly. no point in it. So uh, yeah, your range is, you know, you want to believe about half the range is what you're going to get and keep in mind that your range, you are probably going to want to go farther than what you think when you first get started because there are so many places. We're going to be doing other videos on how to find these places. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know we find some spectacular places, even locally here. And, you know, we're, we're going to do some more videos on how we go about finding all these cool places. Uh, but you're going to want to you're going to want to do that as well. So what would be next, Michelle? So we can just go ahead and move on. Yep. Buying an e-bike with a small battery. Well, yeah, that same thing right there. You know, it all uh, that it one's all, letting us. I don't know about this one. Yeah, he looks like he is into, as well. No. How y'all doing today? It all ties into having you know. You, you want the range. You want the range, and the range is directly related to the battery. Yeah. Yeah. No question about that. So, so what's, those two what's, kind of fall together. Yeah, what's really nice is some of these e-bikes are now starting to come, you know, come standard with two batteries, which makes it, you know, really phenomenally better. Yeah, or a longer <laughs> range, or a yeah. longer range. Remember my first e-bike? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were lucky if I could, if I could squeeze 20 yeah. miles out of that yeah. thing. Yeah, you better so, turn the power off or something if you're oh, going to yeah. get that. Oh, yeah, if we that. were on the flat, I was, I was pedaling with no assistance. And let me tell you, yeah. that, uh, that definitely rejuvenated my interest in doing obtaining today? a new bike. Better than we deserve, thanks. So what's next on the list there, Michelle? Uh, buying from an unknown or unheard of brand. Yes. And let's face it, every other day you see a new brand of, of e-bike. Yeah. So. And some of them are just not really good. Now, I will throw one caveat in there, and if you're somebody that could build your own that may not be a bad thing to do because you might get a deal. Two of us going to come by on your left. Uh, that, that may not be a bad route to go, but you better be able to do it on your own because the controllers, the motors, all these things, very, very seldom are they ever the manufacturer that makes these things. Well, and they're, another, they're other, outsourced. Another and, thing you need to consider with that very thing is if you're building your own, and I know this is a bit of a rabbit hole, but it'll be real quick. Uh, most bike shops will not work on them. Well, yeah, yeah, there's, uh, mm. yeah, and so, I, and I want to tell you real quick, we ran into that situation because I do have the uh, ability to build my own, but that doesn't mean I always want to have no option but to work on my own. And we found out with my custom built Trek, that is the case. I need yep. to do, do that work on that myself. So yeah, very good point, very good point. 
All right, what's next on there, Michelle? Buying the wrong size, you know, buying a frame or a type. Right, right, the, the, the wrong type of frame or the wrong size. And I think, especially because we buy these things online, a lot of them, you can go to the store and get them. Yeah. But a lot of them are purchased online. And uh, uh, these 26 inch fat tire bikes are bigger than a 29er. You know, they're, they're higher up than a 29er is. These are big bikes. They're big bikes. Also, you've got the consideration of your step through or your step over. Um, I, I know a lot of men buy a step over and they regret it later. Uh, I say that, wow, that's all I have is step overs. Uh, uh, but at least I don't regret, regret it. <laughs> so, you know, getting the, the wrong type of frame as well. We're not gonna get into the cargo or folding or anything along those lines. I'm just gonna say buying the wrong type that's not as suitable as it should be for you. So what's next, Michelle? Ignoring the weight of the bike. Yeah, you Man, know. Man, I can tell you that for real. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've, I've preached for a long time. I'd like to see these bikes getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and they tend to get heavier and heavier and heavier. Yeah, I was gonna say, I haven't seen any, any I mean, I, I consider my Rad Rover, or not my Rad Rover, a Rad City Plus, a fairly light bike. It is. It so, is. As, as far as e-bikes are concerned, though, as far as e-bikes are concerned, but. Yeah, it's, it's relatively light, and uh, uh, this one is not. You know, my Trek bike is very light, uh, and that makes things very convenient. And if you're up on a second floor, that'll make things almost mandatory that you have something pretty light. So, you know, there's that consideration. Well, it's not just that, Blaine. It's also, you know, if, if you're... If you're wanting to take your bike somewhere and it weighs 100 pounds, yeah. that's, a, that's a real heck, you know, that's... That's a burden to put it up on a, a yeah, bike rack or in exactly. a vehicle or whatever. Yeah, now Michelle had mentioned about double batteries when we were talking about range. That falls in right here too, because you can also, if you're, if you wanna get some really good range, you can either have a very large battery or a double battery and you only use the double battery when you're going long rides. You know, I'm gonna be testing the range on the, just a regular battery on this bike here at some point. And I won't be using double batteries on this on a lot of the rides that we do. If they're, you know, if I can consistently get 50 miles out of this, I'm not gonna put the double battery on for a 30 mile ride, you know? And so, and that's something that we still have to test, but that cuts down on your weight as well. So what else, Michelle? Ignoring after purchase support. Yes, yes. Again, if you if you are very good at being able to work on these things, that's not going to be as important. If you're not, your after purchase support, you know that that might make you better off to go to a store and purchase one, even though you end up spending a little bit more money there in general. That might be the best route for you. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that's the best route for everybody. No, but you know? that's another video too. Well, we already yeah, did that video. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not a hard cut and dry, this is the best, uh, which is why I don't <laughs> like well, a lot of that the reviews back, that they mix that up, everything leads, sound like the best. Yeah, that you also know? leads back to unknown brands. You don't, you know, you sure. probably are not going to get real good service about from them. That's right. That's so, right. But you know, we, I can. The best thing I can point out is when we bought my Rad, you know, and that first bike had a problem. And I'll tell you what, they were prompt. Yep. They they jumped right in there and fixed the problem and never had to look back. So, you know, there's there's nothing worse than having a you know thousand right. dollar two thousand right. dollar uh, toy that you can't right. play with. Michelle? Yeah. This camera seems like it's at possibly a funny angle. I'm gonna stop and fix this real quick. Okay. So. We'll get back with everybody in just a second. Okay. We're back up, we're, uh, it, it wasn't, it just looked like it was on a very set and way off to the side. We're gonna hook a left right here, Michelle. Uh, where was we at there, Michelle? The um, we were unknown talking brand. About, yeah, no, we were talking about ignoring the after purchase support. Oh yeah, so, yeah, gotcha. Which kind of runs in with the unknown brand thing, you know. Yeah, it does. 
It but, does. But I, you know, I think we had kind of finished up because I had been talking about, you know, the excellent support when, you know, I had a problem with my rad bike and they took care of it. Like, we didn't have to ask them to take care of it because they automatically did it. Yeah, as soon as they found they, had, as soon as they found the problem, that that there was a problem, they took care of it, and so. and it was there initiated by them, not us. Yes. So, which is different from some other brands. Yes, it is. So, and we'll just leave it at that. Yep. Uh, and I think we only have one more, well, one more let point. Me, let, me, let me say one other thing on this, uh, about the unknown brands and the service. Again, and this falls more towards the unknown brands, most of these things, and I can't, I don't think we got into this a whole lot, but most of these bikes are made from outsourced parts. And so if you're very good at that, you can fix. So you might get a good deal that way, but you better be very good. You better be able to know what specs you need to look for to get, say, a new wheel or something like that. So, and that's all I'm gonna get on to with that right there. There could be a deal there for certain people, but you better be that certain person. All right, Michelle. Yep. Talk to me, girl. We got, I think we got just one more and that's, more. you know, disregarding the laws and regu uh, regulations oh, of the yes. bike in your chosen uh, genre. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, this is something that's gonna become a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more important as time goes on, there's no question about that. But even right now, even right now, there are so many places out there. I see a lot of bikes that are marketed as e-mountain bikes and they're not what most e-mountain, places that will accept an e-mountain bike, are. Not, those bikes are not allowed on those trails because they are not a class one e-bike. And uh, uh, for that matter, they may not even like allow e-bikes on their trail. So depending on what you're going to be doing with this bike, if you're gonna be out running errands and riding in a community, this might not be a great, great big consideration for you. You do wanna find out what your local ordinances are considering e-bikes and or regular bicycles. But, uh, uh, but if you're gonna go and do anything like some off-road stuff, that's going to become... There's a lot of sticky situations there. That, 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 well, yeah, it's, it's just going to, you know, you could end up getting into something and not be able to do with it what you was planning on doing with it. So, anything else there, darling? No, no, just, just, you know. I mean, we made some of these mistakes, and our goal is to... Not Number happy. one, I would like to get people on e-bikes. I think this is a great, great, th this is something that over the past four years that we've been doing this has become such a, a, a big part of our life. We just love it to death. And, and I think that that joy is out there for a lot of people to enjoy as well. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that would, be, that would be one thing. We're gonna continue up this way here, Michelle. Got two of us gonna come by you on your left. You're fine, no problem. Y'all have a great ride. One more coming behind me. Uh, <clears throat> you know, who? something just bit me on my neck. Uh, our goal is to get folks out there on these e-bikes. Get you on e-bikes without making all the mistakes that we've seemingly yeah, you know, that we see made. You. We get people emailing <laughs> us that they've made mistakes and, and wanting to know what to do, and uh, uh, people that we talk to. You know, there's a there's a lot of mistakes that can be made, and our goal is to try and cut down on those and mistakes. And the problem with the guys. mistakes, the, the problem with the mistakes that, that are made, they're expensive. Yeah, they can be expensive. They can be expensive. So, all right. Well, with all that said, darling, do you have anything to add? No, I do believe that's about it. All right. Then I think with that right there, what we will do is we will wrap this up. And from right here in Mor where, where are we at? Morrisville, North Carolina. That's where we're at. This is Southern E-Biking and... And... And this is Southern E-Biking. And what are we telling them? <sighs> oh... I don't have anything smart to say today. That's all, folks. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs>
Hey, stay safe. God bless and keep the wheels rolling. Once again, we are out.